So let's look at some specific examples of parabolas, ellipses, and hyperbolas. Um, the parabola is the one you're probably most familiar with. Here's, here's an equation of a parabola. Now, um, you're probably very good at drawing the graph of this parabola. You know that when x is 0, y is equal to 0. And then you could plot points, just choose for x different values. Because this is negative, you know that it's going to open down as the x values go out. Good values to pick here would be ones where um, x squared turns out to be a multiple of 8 so that this fraction would go away. For example, if you were to choose um, 8 for the input, then you'd have 8 squared, that's 64, and 1 eighth of 64 is 8, so you'd have the point 8, negative 8 on the parabola. So it's nice to choose ones where this will turn out to be a nice value. Now, relating this back to the to the formula that we use when we work, when we think about parabolas as conic sections, this number p turns out to have something an interesting um, relationship with the with the parabola. So it's kind of special. So we need to figure out what p is. To do that, we can put it in this form where we have x squared equals four py. So we solve for x squared by multiplying both sides by negative eight and we get x squared equals negative 8y. Comparing that to x squared equals 4py, we can see that 4p in this case must be negative 8, and therefore in this case p is negative 2. That actually tells you something we'll, we'll talk about in a minute, but it tells you that the focus of this parabola is 2 below um, below the center, and there's, a, there's another, uh, there's a, ver a line, a horizontal line called the directrix, which is 2 above the center, which in this case is at 0, 0. So we can, once we find p, that actually tells us about the focus and directrix. The property here is that if, if a wave is coming in and is bounced off this reflector, then the distance it would have to travel to go straight ahead to the directrix matches the distance to this focus here. Also, the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection right there. Um, well, we know when, it, when something hits, when something bounces off, the angle of incidence equals re the angle of reflection, and the angle of reflection is such that it will bounce you to the single point. That's true at every location. And so P is telling you where all of the things that bounce off this reflector will be focused. So P gives you the focus. The directrix would be the straight line that things would reach at the same time if they hadn't bounced off and continued straight ahead. Let's look at another example for a parabola. In this case, we have, we have a y squared, we have a y and an x. So we know this is a parabola because there's one variable that's squared with lower terms and with possibly with lower terms, and then one variable x that's not squared. So to make it fit one of these forms, we should get the variable that's squared alone on one side. And then we can put the rest over here. So we have 8x plus 12 over on the right. So just rearranging. Now we want to complete the square. Remember, half of negative 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. So I'm going to need to add 4 to both sides. And now this is a perfect square. It's y minus 2 squared. It's always y plus half of whatever is multiplying the, the linear part. So y minus 2 squared. Over here, we have 8x plus 16, so I can factor out an 8, and I have 8 times x plus 2. So if we compare that to this basic form, we can see we're talking about the parabola. The value of p, since 4p it corresponds to 8 here, p must be 2 in this case. We can also see that k equals 2 by comparison here. And h, h is what's being subtracted from x. So if you think about x plus 2 as x minus minus 2, you can see that h is negative 2. So the center, well actually we call that the vertex of the parabola, since the parabola doesn't really have something, a, a center point of, a point of central symmetry, then we would say the, the center, well rather the vertex, the place where the parabola turns around, the vertex of this parabola is located at hk, so that's negative 2, 2. And, and the, the focus um, is 2 units 
Um, let's see, in this case, this is a parabola that opens to the right, so the focus is two units um, to the right. You could get this graph just by choosing values of um, y and finding values of x that match those. So, and since this has the form x equals y squared, it's on its side. It's different than what you're used to, y equals x squared, which opens up or down. Okay. Now for an example um, of an ellipse. Here's an ellipse. Um, first thing we want to do to make it fit this form is to divide both sides by this 4225 so that we can get one alone on this side. So we divide 25 x squared over 4225 plus 169y squared over 4225 equals 1. Now, it just so happens that 25 goes in here 169 times, so we get x squared over 169 plus y squared over, let's see, 169 goes in here 25 times. So this is, this is our equation. Now, the way we can graph an ellipse is to think about what happens when either one of the variables is equal to 0. So let's start off by saying suppose that the y value is equal to 0. If the y value equals 0, then we have x squared over 169 equals 1. So that tells you that x squared equals 169, so x equals um, plus or minus 13. So we have two points on our ellipse at minus 13 and plus 13. Um, also, if we set y equal to 0, then we'd be on the, if we set x equal to 0, sorry, then we'd be on the y-axis. If we set x equal to 0, we have y squared over 25 equals 1. So y squared equals 25, so y equals plus or minus 5. Now, just to get a rough sketch of this, we can just draw in the ellipse. And you can see whichever number um, is bigger, whichever number of the two underneath numbers, that's going to tell you which, which axis is the, the longer axis, or we call it the major axis. So in this case, since 169 is bigger than 25, our long axis um, was the x-axis because the big number is under x. And the short axis, the minor axis, um, was the comes from the small value being under y. So it's the y-axis because the small value is under y. So basically when you're drawing an ellipse, just kind of think about making a box at the center. Notice that, that uh, this distance is 2a. So in our case, a squared is 169. The bigger number is one, a squared is 169. That's the bigger number. So And 169 is 13 squared. So you have a box that's 2a across, right? And then this box is, since b squared is 25, b is 5, so our box is 2b long. So you can just draw a little box that's 2a by 2, 2b at the center of the ellipse and then just sketch in the oval shape, the elliptical shape that goes in there. Let's do another example for an ellipse. Um, in this case, we know we're dealing with an ellipse because when we have x squared and y, we have x squared and y squared, right? So it can't be a parabola. And when they're on the same side, the two square side, the two squared terms have the same sign. They're both positive in this case. So this is going to be an ellipse. What we need to do though is to complete the square. So we're going to. We don't have to worry about the x squared, but we have this six. Now, in order to complete the square, the coefficient of y squared has to be 1. So I factor out a 6 so that the coefficient of y squared will be 1, but if I factor a 6 out of 36, I get 6y. This is equal to 0. Now that the coefficient of y squared is 1, I can figure out what to add to complete the square. Half of 6 is 3, and 3 squared is 9, so I need to add 9. And be careful, though. I added 9 inside these parentheses. So if I were to bring that out, I'd have 6 times 9 is 54. So I've actually added a total of 54 on the left-hand side. So I better add 54 on the right-hand side. So we have 9x squared plus 6 times y plus 3 squared. 
because we added 9 to make that, this perfect square y plus 3 squared equals 54. To get it into the standard form, we'd need to divide by 54 so that we have 1 on the right-hand side. So we have 9x squared over 54 plus 6 times y plus 3 squared over 54 equals 1. 9 goes into 54 6 times. 6 goes into 54 9 times. So we have x squared over 6 plus y plus 3 squared over 9 equals 1. This time, we see that when y is, um, the center here is at 0, negative 3. So we have a center at 0, negative 3 for our hyperbola. And when, um, when y is equal to negative 3, so we're on, when we're on this horizontal line, y equals negative 3, then this is 0. And so we have x squared over 6 equals 1. That means x could be plus or minus the square root of 6, which is a little more than 2. So we go over just a little more than 2 to the left and right. And those are the endpoints of our shorter or our minor axis. The y value, because this is a 9, the bigger a squared is 9. So um, we have a equals 3. So we can go 1, 2, 3 above and 1, 2, 3 below that point, and those are the ends of the long axis, the major axis. So we can sketch a little box here, and the ellipse just fits inside the box.